Welcome to this video tutorial on how to render out an animation in V-Ray for Rhino. I'm going to be working with this scene here where we've got this small structure on top of this hill surrounded by some water and currently in the render this looks like this and we're going to just render out a simple pan using V-Ray and using Rhino's built-in animation settings to set up the animation. To start this we're going to just go to our render settings here and make sure under our current renderer that V-Ray for Rhino is turned on there. The next thing we're going to do is set up our animation and I'm going to be using a simple pan animation using these two lines to dictate the camera movement and the camera's view. Now to do this we need to go to the render tools here and at the end of the render tools you'll find these three animation tools and we'll just open these up here. Now the record button we don't actually need for using V-Ray because we can record or render out the animation directly within V-Ray's asset editor. So first we're going to set up the animation using the animation setup panel and I'm going to be using this path animation. And if we select this it will ask us to select our camera path which I'll set as this line and then our target path which I'll set as this line here. In here you can then set the number of frames you want your animation to be and the more frames you do the slower the animation will be. Essentially it's going to just take this number of frames, divide the line you've made for your camera by that number and then it will move the camera by that division at each stage and will render out a new frame for each of that animation. We want the file type to be JPEG and then under capture method we're going to select render full. And what this would do is it will use whichever renderer you have assigned, which is V-Ray in this case, to render out each of these frames of animation. So each of my 300 frames here. And then for the viewport, we'll just select perspective so it will be this view. And we can use the animation name as animation. And then we're going to hit OK. Now to preview this, we can use the green play button in this animation preview just to test out that animation. And there we can see we've got that pan working nicely there. And I think it's about the right speed. So I'm happy with my animation setup now. So now we've set that up, we're then going to open up our V-Ray Asset Editor here and go to the Settings tab. Now in order to render out the animation and not just a single frame, we need to scroll down to this Animation tab here. And we're going to open this up and turn on the Animation tab. Here it will ask you where your animation is coming from, and we're doing it within Rhino, and the time segment you want to animate. Now this is quite useful because it allows us to either render the entire animation, or if we want to render from a specific frame, we can hit this frame range and type in the frames that we want to render from. Because I've set my animation up at 300 frames, I can render whichever kind of amount within that range I want to. And this is quite a useful kind of add-on we get in V-Ray because it allows us to sort of render out half of the animation, then we can come back and render the other half, or just we can re-render a specific part of that animation so we don't have to always re-render the entire animation each time. Now some things to bear in mind when you're rendering out an animation is that we want each of our frames to save as they're rendered. So in order for that to happen, we need to make sure that we're kind of saving each of those frames as they currently render. Now, first what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure our interactive is turned off here. That way we can set up the quality to be high as it renders, and we can also set an image output under this save image in render output. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn on that save image, and under file path, we're just going to make a new folder Call this render for our image to save into and we're going to make sure within that folder here we're just saving it as a jpeg file and we give it a number there and number one is fine for this it will automatically kind of save the image in sequence with a number for the image in sequence when it renders it out we're going to click save there now what we need to do as well is we need to set the kind of quality settings for our render and in this we can set the amount of time each frame will render for. Now by default this time option is ticked off and I usually turn it on when I'm doing animations and here we can set the time limit per frame. So currently at the moment it will do one minute per frame so it will render for a minute and then after that minute it will save that frame and then move on to the next frame in the animation. You always need to bear in mind how many frames of animation you have, so I have 300 in this case, and how many minutes you're rendering it for. 
So we're going to leave that at one minute per animation and you might want to always do a test of one frame, see how long it takes. If it's a high enough quality at a minute, then you're fine there. Once we've set that up, we've got our time, we've got our saved image, we've got our animation turned on, we're now ready to render out our animation. Um, what you might also want to do if you want to add any render elements to this, you can add these in as well and these will also automatically save as we render it out. So it might be that you want to add a few different render elements to your scene and these will save when the file is saved as you're rendering it out. So let's add just another one of these. We're going to add in the raw reflection here. And then back to our settings when we're ready to go I'm then going to hit the render button and it will start rendering out each of our frames and it will start from frame zero here. As you can see we've got the kind of first frame of animation and as that renders once that reaches the end it will then move on to the next frame of animation. I'm going to leave this rendering now so we can render out the whole animation and then we'll see what the final result is and where these images are saving once that animation is complete. Now my animation has finished rendering, I'm going to now open up the folder where those files have saved. And here we can see we have the rendered animation files saved in this folder and we can kind of cycle through these in sequence to see that animation and it's also saved out my render elements too. We've got a glare render element here and we've also got a raw light render element which is also saved in sequence here as well. So you can see each of the components of my render have saved out separately in sequence here and we can now take this JPEG stack and essentially turn it into an animation using a program like After Effects or sort of similar um, animation based programs. If for some reason you need to go back and re-render certain frames, what we can always do is we can open up our asset editor again, go down to our frame range and type in the specific frames we need to re-render. And what that would do is when we've typed those in and given it a frame range, we can hit the render button and it will start exactly from those frames. So we don't have to go back and render all the frames in sequence again. So it's very easy to go back and kind of fine tune any animation you're doing specifically within V-Ray. So that was a quick tutorial on how to render an animation in V-Ray for Rhino. I hope you found this tutorial useful. And If there's any other videos you want to watch on rendering or kind of image creation in Rhino and V-Ray, please check out the videos on the channel.